how can one know that through which everything is known? How can one know the knower? Namaste. So, after the two introductory verses, honoring the Guru and establishing the purpose of the work, Vidyaranya jumps right into the work, which is the analysis of consciousness. So, let's jump right into the text along with him. Shab. The Parshadayo Vedya Vaichitra Jagare Pritak Tato Vibhakta Tatsang Vid Aikarupyana Bhidyate The objects of knowledge, that is to say, sound, touch, etc., which are perceived in the waking state, are different from each other because of their peculiarities. But the consciousness of these, which is different from them, does not differ because of its homogeneity. The objects perceived in the waking state are different, but the perceiving consciousness, different from the objects, is one and the same. It is improper to accept more than one consciousness when one is enough to explain things. Moreover, consciousness, having no differential, cannot but be one. Tatasvapne travedyantu nastirang jagare stirang tadbedo tastayo sangvid ekarupa nabhidyate. Similar is the case in the dream state. Here the perceived objects are transient, and in the waking state they seem permanent. So there is difference between them. But the perceiving consciousness in both states does not differ. It is homogeneous. Things perceived in dream vanish subsequently, but it is otherwise with the waking experience. But the knowledge of experienced things or the consciousness which helps the perception in both states is the same. Supto tistasya sau supta Tambodo bhavet smriti, sachava buddha vishaya, vabuddham tatara tataha. A person awaking from deep sleep consciously remembers his lack of perception during that state. Remembrance consists of objects experienced earlier. It is therefore clear that even in deep sleep, want of knowledge is perceived. Remembrance of not knowing anything in sleep indicates previous experience. So, consciousness persists in sleep. Sabodo vishayad bhinno nabodhat svapna bodhavat evang sthanatraye pyeka sangvitadvadinantare This consciousness in the deep sleep state is indeed distinct from the object, here ignorance, but not from itself, as is the consciousness in the state of dream. Thus, in all the three states, the consciousness, being homogeneous, is the same. It is so in other ways, too. The perceiver is the same in all three states. So, in the different states of consciousness... The objects are always different, different from each other, and different from consciousness itself. However, in consciousness, there is no difference. The consciousness in waking state, dream state, and even in deep sleep is the same. Only the objects are different. In the dream state, the objects are temporary. In the waking state, they're more permanent, but still, they come into manifestation and go out of manifestation according to the laws of karma, cause and effect. Even in deep sleep, where there are no objects, or you could say the object is ignorance, the consciousness that knows those objects or lack thereof is the same. Consciousness is homogeneous 
There is no difference in consciousness, only in its contents, the objects of consciousness. So, let's take a look at our good old chart of the four states of consciousness, and we see here that in the waking state, the person sees a view of the world called Dvaitavada, and that's exactly what he just said in these verses, that in the waking state, the objects appear all different, separate, individual. But in the dream state, svapna, the objects are there coming from the mind, not from the senses, and they are memories of previously experienced objects, just mixed up and blended into some fantasy, some dream. And that dream does not persist. When you wake up, it's gone, and it's never coming back. But the memory of the previous existing states does not go away. Nevertheless, these objects of consciousness are very impermanent compared to those in the waking state where there appears to be continuity from the time the one goes to sleep until he wakes up in the morning. Even though these objects are, strictly speaking, temporary, at least there is some continuity between one day and the next. However, in the sushupti state, there are no objects visible, or ignorance is the only object visible. And this leads to a view, vivartavada. Vivarta means illusion. And in vivartavada, one goes, wait a minute, everything that I was aware of in waking and dreams, in both the physical world, the manifested creation, and in the mind, is all gone. None of it remains. That means it's all temporary, therefore illusion. So one sees the world as an illusion in sushupti. You see, this is the relativity of consciousness, where even though the consciousness is the same in the different states, the objects are different, and they are seen differently, therefore they lead to different views of the world then the yogas, or spiritual observances, based on these views, also differ. Karma yoga is based on some manipulation of the external objects. Bhakti yoga is based on a similar manipulation of the internal objects. Raja yoga is based on attaining a state where there are no objects. This is nirvikalpa samadhi very much praised by the yogis. However, it is still only a stepping stone to the final realization, aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman, I am the self, I am that which is the same in all states of consciousness, the same no matter the difference in the various objects of consciousness, and the same whether waking, sleeping, deep sleep, or in illumination, cognition, gnosis, as he calls it, the plenary experience of Turiya. So, this is our aim. We want to transcend the differences in the various states of consciousness and come to realize that which is the same in all of them. That is the self. That is Brahman, and that is what we will understand and realize by studying this wonderful book, Sri Panchadashi. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.